Hey guys, my name is Jay, welcome to my channel. This is where I like to share my art projects with you and today we're going to be custom building a dice tower from scratch. For those of you who don't know what a dice tower is, it's like a structure you bring to board game night. Uh, you drop your dice in, it kind of rolls them for you and then presents the outcome for everyone to see. So uh, it's good for a couple of reasons. It helps the little ones roll their dice, it keeps the dice all local on the table so you're not looking everywhere for them each turn. And also it stops those cheaters who like to count those dice rolls that fall on the floor. You know who you are. So uh, stick around and we'll uh, have some fun with it. Does your family game night always suffer from problematic dice rolls? These issues could include shaking far too long. Dice rolling off the table to where you can no longer find them. And wild inaccuracy. Fear not, I have a solution. Now let's grab yourself some basic materials. I'm using some foam core. You can use cardboard if you like. You want a ruler, a sharp knife, a pencil or marker, and a hot glue gun. And I'm using a bit of MDF that I bought from the local hardware store. You can use cardboard for the base as well. I just find this is much more sturdy and stays nice and flat for your structure. And you want to work out the area that you want the tower to sit and also the area that you want the dice to eventually roll out, settle and be on display for everyone to view. Now you don't need to have a round base, you can have a rectangular, square, whatever shape you like. And the first step will be to cut out and glue together the back and one of the sides of the tower. I've gone about 25 centimeters tall and this will allow me to space out evenly the platforms inside that will jumble up the dice as they make their way to the bottom of the tower. So you want to cut three of these platforms out and you want to glue them so they're on an angle so when the dice hit they roll on to the next level and make their way down. So, And leave yourself a bit of a gap at the top and bottom for the entry and the exit of the dice. Now I've chosen to just do three sloping platforms inside the tower which is the perfect amount for this, enough to jumble those dice up as they make their way down. Keep in mind if you want to add more it'll just take longer for the dice to reach the bottom. Now you want to cut these on a bit of a 45 degree angle uh, so that when you glue them onto the wall of the tower uh, that they stay kind of glued on that angle. It doesn't need to be exact as long as the dice don't settle on them they need to keep on moving as they fall from platform to platform. So now that they're cut out I'm just going to work out and finalize the spacing of where I'm going to put these before I glue them. As mentioned earlier, you don't need to use foam core, you can just use cardboard. So get the kids to go find some old cardboard boxes, cut them up, uh, as it's always good to reuse and recycle materials. So I'm just going to work out roughly where I'm going to have the exit ramp that spits those dice out through the base. Do some quick measurements, make sure I don't glue that bottom sloping uh, platform below that point. And uh, yeah, mark everything out before you start gluing. Check twice, glue once is a good saying. Now the idea behind this build is to just show you the basics on, on how this thing uh, works and your kids can go and make their own instead of using their knife they can just use scissors and cardboard uh, and whatever other glue you have lying around that'll, that'll do the trick. And once that structure is completed then you can go your own way on how you want to take it further. Decorating it, drawing it, painting it. Uh, you'll see what I do with this one. But yeah, feel free to go as tame or as crazy as you like. So as you can see, I've glued that middle platform and lining them up now, you can kind of see the shape of, uh, of it forming and the, uh, and the overall design. Now I've deliberately left a little bit of that side panel there exposed and I'm not going to reveal exactly why I've done that yet. I do have a method to my madness. Uh, but yeah, for now we're just going to glue this all together and get that main structure uh, functioning. And also just remember, you're not going to see any of this internal working, so it'll all be covered up, so don't worry about being too neat or pedantic with it. So I'm just doing some final checks to make sure they're all glued in position, and uh, you can see the flow of the dice will bounce from the top, work its way down. And just doing some final measurements now for that bottom slope so that it spits those dice out into the little viewing area of your base. Where everyone can see my unlucky roll. Now it's important to make sure the angle of that slope is enough to make sure it really does push those dice out because you don't want them getting stuck at the bottom. And uh, 
Again, cut the 45 degree angle off of the top and bottom side of that ram so it sits nice and flush when you do glue it to both the back and the base. Now that the glue has set and all the main components are in place, we'll give this a quick test run. Now the only dice I had on hand are some metal dice, so they are quite heavy, but you can see the flow of the dice as they tumble through the tower, and that's exactly what we want. Once you're happy with the internal structure, measure and cut the front face of the tower, making sure you leave that nice big gap at the bottom for the dice to roll out and uh, into the little display area. Don't do what I did and almost glue right to the bottom, trapping the dice inside. That'll be between us. Now just double checking the position where that's going to sit. And we'll give it another quick test run with some dice, make sure it makes its way out from top to bottom. And then once we're happy with that, we go ahead and glue it. Now from here all you guys are got to do is create a fence line or some sort of barrier to stop the dice from rolling off the base. Um, it just depends on what theme you're going for, it would be what you want to use, you know, whether you want to have rocks around the edges, if it's like a medieval theme or a brick wall, or uh, if you want to have just sort of like an old rickety wooden fence. Now um, materials you could use would be paddle pop sticks or popsicle sticks, some more foam core, we've got corrugated card, it's good for making rusty fences, uh, and just some EVA floor foam choose whatever you like it's kind of up to you from this point on and as you may have guessed from the thumbnail I'm gonna do kind of a medieval castle sort of tower and um, I'm gonna include a couple of little extras which I may have hinted at earlier we're gonna do some platforms on the side of that tower using that protruding sort of back wall the lower part is gonna house uh, a space to put my iPhone for when I want to play music or when I want to use an interactive app for my games and the top is going to basically house uh, a set of dice so you can keep your dice on the top rather than leave them laying out on the table or just for safekeeping for an ongoing game and um, yeah we're basically going to just build these two areas but incorporate the design into the look of the tower so it looks like it's part of the tower and not a standout holder I suppose so and here I'm just going to cut a hole out for the charger port uh, at the bottom of the phone and also a hole in the back of the tower for the cable to run freely through. And now that I've cut that hole at the back, I can retrieve the little piece that I dropped in there from the top. So, winning. And it's a good idea to always double check your work as you're going along, so I'm just going to check that the phone still fits in that position with that hole lining up in the correct place. So I'm just going to glue some more foam core on the top there to stop the dice from falling out. So just to make a little bit of a, uh, a boxed in area there. Again, it doesn't need to be neat because we're going to be covering this up with some um, stone bricks to, to surround the entire castle. And uh, yeah, it'll cover up any glue marks or anything like that. So don't worry about it. Now, I'm thinking of doing some timber floors. So good thing to do here is use some uh, popsicle sticks. Um, work out how many you need by just laying them out first, trim them down to size and what I like to do is cut every second one in half so you've got that join line and then when you lay them all out they're all offset from each other. Just adds that little bit of uh, believability to it. And then also keep in mind uh, where I've done that hole. I want to probably break some of these up to look like the floorboards have been broken through and there's a hole in the, in the timber floor. So as you can see I've repeated the process for the wall uh, at the back there as well. And what we're going to do is create some stonework for that side of the, uh, of the tower. So we're just going to hot glue some EVA floor foam cut up into little strips and laying them out. Doesn't matter if there's some gaps in between them as well because I want this to look kind of like an old looking tower. It's had a bit of battle damage, it's moved around a little bit over time. Now I found these uh, wooden kind of supports for picture frames, you get a pack of them when you buy a picture frame. I've had them sitting around for ages, so again, reusing um, materials is always good. And I'm just going to use some more EVA foam cut into strips uh, for the fence line, so it'll be a bit of a stone fence.
Now I've had a bit of an idea. Uh, I'm kind of want to add a little bit of um, darkness to this tower. So I figured I might add some teeth as though the tower has got teeth growing out of it. You know, dragon's teeth or something like that. And uh, we're going to cut a bunch of these down. So just get some scrap bits of EVA foam once again. Get some scissors and just sort of cut them so they taper into a point at the top. And just repeat the process. Don't keep them all the same. You want to try and mix and match the different sizes until uh, you get a whole bunch of them. And you can sort of play around with your position and where you want. I want the fence line to sort of be the bottom jaw line with the teeth coming up. And I'm thinking of doing some uh, more teeth for where the dice come out of the tower. So sort of having them on the top, that'd be the, the top jaw with the opening kind of being the mouth. Now I bought this EVA foam from the local hardware store if you're here in Australia. It's Bunnings. Uh, we got about four sheets for $10 I think it was. And uh, it's pretty easy to use. You can cut it, you can shape it a little bit if you add some heat. And um, yeah, it's great for spikes and stonework, things like that. So, And it's light as well. So as you can see, that fence line is coming together with those teeth there at the front representing the bottom jaws. And we want to create a bit of an archway of teeth above that uh, exit of the tower. And again, we'll just cut up a bunch of these and uh, position them one by one. And then hopefully it looks like the tower is vomiting the dice out. Now that that's uh, complete and functioning, we're going to do the panels on the sides of the tower. We're going to make these look like stone walls. Uh, so get some EVA foam, cut out your lines for your bricks. Uh, you can add some details and things to that as well, like cracks and, and chips. And the great thing about EVA foam is you can heat it up and it creates a really cool effect using your cut lines. Now don't cut all the way through. Normally I, with a project like this, I would create each individual brick and stack them all up but for the purpose of this video I'm just going to keep it simple so it's uh, accessible to everybody and uh, yeah you'll see what I mean in a moment so once that's all cut to shape and you're happy with where your bricks are sitting grab a heat gun I'm not sure if a hairdryer will get hot enough but uh, you give it a go and what it does is it tightens up and it shrinks the material and it separates the gap between where you've cut those uh, those grooves in and you can see like magic it it really emphasizes the detail that you've put into that foam so do that heat it all the way over you will feel it change shape a little bit but that's fine as it cools you can sort of reshape it and uh, yeah as I said you can go in and put in all the cracks and all the chips and scratches and scuffs make it look a bit battle worn go as crazy as you want just keep in mind when you heat it those details will really uh, be emphasized and once you're happy with that, uh, you go ahead and stick it on. I've just cut some grooves out for some more of these timber uh, supports. And then we're just going to hot glue gun that in position on that side. And then just go ahead and repeat the process for the other three sides of the, uh, of the tower. And as you can see on the back side there, I've incorporated that hole for the charger cable and made it look like it's uh, supposed to be there from battle damage. Now I've decided to hang a banner along the front of the uh, tower. So just using a skewer and the ends of some popsicle sticks, I'm going to make the rail there to hang it from. Now I've also decided to add some extra spikes on the lower platform side of the base, just to look like it's deterring enemies from charging on that low side. I've gone ahead and cut out a platform for the top of the tower I'm thinking of archers or maybe a mage would have used it in battle and uh, yeah, just create a bit of a story of why you're doing things it makes it a little bit more interesting and um, yeah just glue that down and cut out those shapes of the uh, of the brickwork to sort of suit the rest of the tower and uh, heat it up with a gun and there you go so next I'm going to show you guys how to create fabric looking material uh, out of two pieces of paper and some PVA glue or craft glue. So I like to cut a little wider at the bottom because it, as you make the folds it will kind of shrink at that lower end. So I apply the glue between the two sheets of paper, press them down, try and get the air bubbles out and, uh, and flatten it so then the glue is evenly spread between them. Uh, a good trick to do is use a bit of a ruler or a, or a card on a piece of tissue to sort of get rid of that excess and just run it along gently. And then start rolling and folding uh, those sides and edges and work your way towards the middle 
and you'll notice over time it starts to harden up a little bit as you're working with the glue. If you want to speed up the process you can always use a heat gun but honestly it doesn't take too long and you want it to sort of stay a little bit damp while you're working with it so then you get all those wavy lines and, and shapes that fabric usually has. So once you're happy with the shape you can start ripping and tearing the bottom of the fabric like it's been sitting up there for years and it's a bit worn uh, or you can leave it nice and pristine depending on what you're applying it to. I've also gone ahead and got a skewer and sort of folded the top pieces just so it does dry with the shapes of those sort of hooked over bits of fabric so it'll perch on there nicely and as you can see it's, it's dried pretty quickly and uh, I can get an idea of how it's going to look. And I've repeated the process for another tarp or piece of fabric hanging off the back of the tower as well. Now I like to keep a box of bits and pieces, I bought this from an online craft store called Zart. Uh, now it's got like your putter pop sticks, like little round discs or like wooden bits and pieces. So uh, I'm going to make a kind of spell book um, pedestal that I'm going to put on the top of the tower. Like I said earlier, it might be a bit of a wizard sitting up there casting spells down at the enemies. And uh, you'll also notice I've created a bit of a wallpaper look on the timber wall. Uh, just using the same method with the paper, two sheets together, glued it, but then I've applied the glue on the underside, stuck it on and sort of ripped it up like it's all fallen apart over time, revealing those floorboards underneath. So I'm going to use this little wooden disc maybe to create a shield, um, maybe some weapons and some armory equipment sitting at the top. And I've also found an uh, old spell book from a bit of a Warhammer kit, which will sit nicely on that pedestal. I'm just going to apply some PVA glue on and around the teeth areas. This does make them a little bit smoother for the paint to go on, uh, but also adds a little bit of strength because uh, they're a little bit more vulnerable where they come to a point. Now we're also going to add some sand to the ground areas just to give it a bit more texture. And we're also going to glue in some wooden posts just to add a bit of extra detail and just finish off those uh, raw edges of the foam or cardboard. Now I've applied a sticker to act as a mask, hit it with some paint, Peel that sticker off revealing your pattern. I've done A for art armory, naturally, but feel free to paint on whatever design you like. On to painting the tower. So we're going to prime it first with some fiddly bits. Now the advantage of using the grey primer is we can use it as our base colour. Use some uh, beige for the teeth. Don't want them to look too white. And then we're going to get some really light grey and just dry brush those areas of all the cracks and all the edges where it's had the most wear and tear and uh, where the light is likely going to hit. I've masked up all the timber areas prior to priming. We're going to peel all that off and we're going to add some washes and some really watered down paints to make them look a little bit darker and a little bit more lived in. And repeat the dry brush process for the teeth, just getting those highlights to pop. And then we're going to paint the uh, the main area where the dice will come and settle. So we're going to add some browns and some creams into there and just sort of swoosh them around while the paint's still a bit wet. And I'm just going to get some black wash just to work into those recesses and also the lower end of the banner just to make it look like this where all the rain has fallen and settled and then all the dust has been collected on those edges. So you just use a bit of a lighter color to dry brush once again. When you're happy with that, uh, you can hang it up on that rail that we've installed earlier. Go in with a few more details with the paints, paint the tarp at the back, make that sort of very weathered and worn as well using some more washes. Now I'm just going to add a few more details to the base, chuck some glue down, either use flock or static grass, sprinkle that in over the top, make a little bit of greenery, add some contrast to those colours and finally add in some bushes. And to finish this off I may chuck in some more details like these spearheads and I think we're done. Just before the reveal, I'd like to give a quick shout out to Queensland Networks, who custom created my PC for my content creating and gaming needs. Check the link below. So there you go guys, one custom built dice tower built from scratch with some added features. I hope this encourages you to create your own designs, have some fun with it, either build your own and impress your friends when you go around to their place for game night, or build it with the family and enjoy it at home. Cheers for hanging out.